the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9. I'm Thasmeen Mafus. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm Chris Flanagan. We have a lot to get to tonight, but we begin tonight with your Monday night forecast. Let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. Yeah, Janessa, parts of the region had some severe storms earlier. Is the worst of it over now? You know, we have a few storms that are getting rowdy. Nothing on the severe uh, status side, but definitely a good amount of moisture that continues to hover in from the south. And just about 15 minutes ago, we did see a little bit of rotation across uh, this cell and that storm out of uh, Leesburg. You can see there is lightning associated with this, but our debris signature that really kind of detects any kind of tornado uh, has kind of died out. So there was hints of that storm uh, going into a tornado tornado warning at this point, nothing severe, uh, just a good soaking rain from uh, Purcellville into Charlestown, Brunswick as well. And this will continue its track towards the north. So Hagerstown, I would get ready uh, for the, a good clip of moisture to make its way across 70 and cross over to that PA line. Here's where we've been dealing with a good uh, saturated moisture for most of the evening across uh, northern Virginia areas of orange. They have just issued a uh, flash flood uh, warning in that area just because we've had multiple rounds of moisture from Lorray, Culpeper, Warrington into uh, Front Royal. So you have a good saturated ground. I looked at some of the totals. We're nearing an inch here just in the last three to four hours. So a good clip of rain. Kaiser and Co uh, Cumberland area across 66, a good uh, dose of moisture. Here are your power outages across uh, the area at this moment we have about 20 to 10% uh, of customers out towards uh, Culpeper without power and so really all of our western communities they are a concern at this hour really the heat and humidity continues to be a problem so it's very vital that we get the power on in this area uh, just because man humidity is roaring at the nine o'clock hour we also have air quality concerns across Prince George's County into areas of the district and southern uh, Monk Montgomery County. It is a code orange, but you've noticed kind of the haze picking up yesterday into this afternoon. Remember, we have multiple wildfires that are burning across uh, eastern Canada, so that's going to remain a problem. Here's your evening planner. We're going to keep showers and a few storms in the forecast through midnight. Then that uh, storm system kind of loosens up a bit, but we're still tracking rain for multiple days folks we're talking about potentially five to six days and it's going to allow for a good three to four inches across the district of your uh, extended forecast coming up all right new details tonight a community is in mourning after two teens were shot to death on father's day yeah police say 18 year old kevin mason and 15 year old demarcus pinckney were killed on langston place southeast just before 9 p.m our part of Merrill carbone joins us live from police headquarters tonight where officers continue to investigate these murders in Marielle. You spoke tonight with people who know and love those boys. This is a devastating loss for the community. Yeah, that's mean one person told me that uh, these two boys, they were future community leaders and uh, that they both had big dreams of making something of both themselves and making their neighborhoods better. And now they'll never have a chance to do that. You know, I heard that some go pop, pop. Pop. But then it went da, 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 like a machine gun. For Patricia Denson, hearing those gunshots was terrifying. But then. And next thing I know, the policeman pulls up and I come outside, come to the door, and they say that it was Marco. They hollering, Marco, Kevin, Marco, Kevin. And terror turned to heartbreak. You see, that child mama get on her knees in the middle of that street. And she prayed, and I think as she was praying, her child's spirit was soaring. Police say the two teens, Kevin Mason and DeMarco Pinckney, were shot to death Sunday night here on Langston Place Southeast. Monday, police cars monitored the area as family members, friends, and neighbors gathered to grieve. Remembering Kevin as an entertainer and Marco as a designer known for making his own t-shirts. To hear that these, these young men specifically were shot by drive by the screams like I, I I couldn't take it. Joanna Hardy was a mentor to Kevin through her organization Guns Down Friday. He wanted to change his community. She says the boys were good kids, kind and loving. These were 
like our community leaders, they were up next in the neighborhood to create change. What the community need to understand is why guns are getting in these kids' hands. Prayers seem not to be working for this situation. And Denton lost her own daughter five years ago to suicide, and she says during that time, Marco was there comforting her through it all. Uh, she tells us that it's just so devastating to lose a child, and of course now there are two families experiencing that tonight. Uh, Kristen Thuzmin, here the police department, they are offering a $25,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest in each of these cases. So in total, that is a $50,000 reward. Reporting live from police headquarters tonight, I'm Ariel Carbone, DC News Now. All right, thank you. And DC News Now is your local election headquarters and voters across Virginia are headed to the polls tomorrow to cast their ballots in the primary elections. Now with all 140 Virginia General Assembly seats on the line this November, the states are sky high. They certainly are. Republicans hope to keep control of the House and win a majority in the Virginia Senate. Democrats are looking to regain the House and at least keep its Senate majority. Yeah, so tomorrow polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. People in line by 7 p.m. will be allowed to vote. You'll need to show an accepted form of ID, but it does not have to include a photo. Now, those without an ID can still vote using a provisional ballot. Now, when you walk into the voting booth in one Northern Virginia County, things will look a little different. Arlington County is the first to use a ranked choice voting system to pick its board candidates. So why are they doing it and how does this all work? A Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcillo joins us live from Arlington with all that you need to know before you head to the polls. And Max, there are high hopes for this new way of voting to work out. There are and they really hope it'll accomplish two big things. One is that'll get rid of some of the ugly campaigning we've seen in politics. Also, some of the polarization we've seen in the last several years. Arlington, as you mentioned, the first one to do it, and they're hoping that it'll take this election and few, maybe future elections to one focused on the issues. It's an important race that will end with two Democrats nominated for seats on the Arlington County Board, but the six candidates' journeys to the board will begin with a new-looking ballot. Voters in Arlington really have a slightly different job. It's still pretty easy. That job is to rank your top three candidates in order. So let's show you how it works using ice cream flavors. My personal favorite cookies and cream, that's my number one, then vanilla, then chocolate. The first thing we see is that vanilla won. So we'll take all the extra vanilla votes and give it to their number twos. And then each round after that, we'll eliminate the least popular flavor. So sorry, vegan matcha, and give their next votes to their next ranked flavor. And we'll do that for each round until we have our two winners that won't serve on the board, but will serve for dessert, vanilla and chocolate. A lighthearted exercise for a serious democratic activity. Liz White with Upvote Virginia has been lobbying for it across the Commonwealth. I think it represents, um, gives us an, a chance to see how ranked choice voting accurately represents a diverse electorate. Make the best case, try to reach as many voters as possible. Michael Shea is excited. He's waited for this change for several years after he had to pick just one candidate to support in a 2015 board race. I do know that people like me who wanted to support all four, who, who respected all four, ranked choice voting would allow me to do that by ranking them. So, and that would have been a win. Now, both White and Shea say the way to measure success tomorrow won't be when results come in. We are expecting uh, some delay in that, as we might have gotten used to uh, with some of the recent elections. Uh, but they say success will be based on how easy the voters find it. Now, there is some concern about potential confusion with these ballots. Uh, Arlington has only committed to this primary and this board race being ranked choice voting. No commitments beyond that, so it remains to be seen if they'll do it again in November. Reporting live from Arlington, Max Marcella, DC News Now. Max, thank you. Well, some of Northern Virginia's progressive top prosecutors are being challenged by fellow Democrats. In Fairfax County, Commonwealth's attorney Steve Descano is facing off against trial lawyer Ed Nuttall. In Loudoun County, incumbent Buddha Bibaraj is up against defense attorney Elizabeth Lancaster. Arlington County and Falls Church incumbent Parisa Dagani Tafti is being challenged by Josh Katcher, the former deputy Commonwealth's attorney. Yeah, so other races to keep an eye on, that's the Prince William County Chair and the multiple Board of Supervisor positions are also on the ballot. So remember, like Max said, they'll be making some big decisions about those controversial data centers. In Fairfax County incumbent chairman Jeffrey McKay has a challenger. She's Lisa Downing, a former CIA employee. 
The Arlington County Board has two open spots. They'll be making some key decisions regarding new missing middle housing policies as well. All right, so Juneteenth celebrations were underway around the region today. The newest federal holiday marks a day in 1865 when the last enslaved people in the U.S. learned they were free. Now take a look. This was at the Anacostia Community Museum in D.C. The museum hosted a Juneteenth Freedom Celebration with local live performances, trivia, some Zumba classes, and a jump rope contest. So, can you tell me what you're doing here today? Uh, I, I just crushed, uh, like, double dutch. I just crushed double dutch. Double dutch? What's that? Two ropes. Two ropes? And I... What a cutie! It's adorable. Yeah, crushing double dutch, man. I can't even do that. I can't even jump with one <laughs> rope. I'm not doing two. Oh, you've got an excuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so Pretty good one. Hundreds of, this one right here. But anyways, hundreds of people came out to celebrate Juneteenth in Prince George's County. Yeah, there was food, vendors, live performances, all happening at National Harbor this evening. Our Yam Marisa Say was there in Oxon Hill and spoke with people about this historic day. It's a day that was celebrated for years. I've known about this holiday from ever, ever since high school. I had my best friend who grew up in Texas, so she used to talk about it all the time and how it was a holiday and how the world was behind and they needed to catch up. And now it's nationally recognized. I'm excited. I'm glad. It's, it's due. It's due time. <laughs> I think it's way overdue and well yeah. deserved. Hundreds of people gathered at the National Harbor Plaza to celebrate Juneteenth in unity. Just the crowd, just to see how many people came out to support. It's a blast. I just love being around my people. Many appreciating the food, performances, and even the unique t-shirt styles. It makes me feel great. And to see all the different t-shirts, so many different styles of all the Juneteenth that everyone came out here representing, representing for their culture, for the black people. Some say recognizing the history behind Juneteenth is something everyone should learn about, no matter your race or age. All this stuff really happened. This is reality. Yeah. It, 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 it wasn't no joke. We definitely got to teach our young about this holiday and make sure they know our history. Think about all the people who probably died trying to tell someone that we were free and they didn't believe them because there was someone else telling them that they weren't free. Reporting in Prince George's County, I'm Yamari Sase, DC News Now.